Coach Harbaugh, um, starting on the left. Chris? Coach, can you give us an update on, on Mike Carter, please? Yeah, uh, Mike had a medical emergency during the game, and he's in stable condition. He's going to uh, stay overnight here in Bloomington for continued observation. But uh, Mike's a strong guy, and uh, just uh, you know, abundant prayers going his way. Um, and uh, yeah, I really can put things in perspective. Uh, yeah, just everybody in the moment, everybody's, everybody's, uh, you know, just their thoughts are with Mike, you know, I mean, it's, that's a, mine were, I mean, everybody around, around us was to, you know, just get him to give him the care that, uh, he needed. And I thought they, um, you know, he was able, he was able to, you know, um, before they took him off, looked like he was. He was, you know, back. Um, but just the most important thing is, is his health at that point in time. Well, I think Indiana did a really good job taking away the run game, um, trying to limit it as much as possible. Now, now Blake is, Corm is such a great back that uh, you know, he still rushed for 125, 130 yards again. Uh, you know, he's just he's just so good. Uh, and I thought we were doing a good job coming off the ball. Um, we just had to adjust uh, some of the perimeter plays in the run game. Uh, were especially being taken away. Um, and I thought we did a good job making those adjustments. Um, other adjustments were to uh, you know, really put it in the in the JJ McCarthy's hands. You know, uh, let him throw the ball, and the receivers res really responded. Um, Ronnie Bell had a big day. Uh, I think 11 catches. Uh, Schoonmaker had nine. Uh, CJ had two touchdowns, and you know, real a real fine catch. Um, when, it went the one time JJ got hit, uh, you know, the ball was behind Cornelius, and, and he made a good hit, which tells you what a good job the offensive line was doing in pass protection. So, yeah, um, yeah I felt uh, I felt good, uh, you know, getting off the script too. That uh, you know that produced a, um, some big plays uh, coming off the, our own two yard line, 98 yard drive. Uh, you know, that was off script and. Uh, you know, it was a that was a huge huge drive and and the the throwing game really was was big in that in that portion and and uh, yeah I love, I love the way JJ responded I mean he was so cool and, and calm back there um, picked up a f couple first downs with his legs and um, you know it was pretty much on the money I mean 18 of 28 of 34 I think something somewhere in that range I mean that's pretty darn good and 300 yards and it's it's kind of cool uh, I think. A lot of quarterbacks have been around, uh, you know, when they, they get that first 300 yard game. I mean, oh, I can do this now. I, I can really do this. And, and that, uh, that that's usually bodes well and propels them, propels them onward. Um, you know, there's just times that we just weren't, I don't know what the percentage would be, maybe three quarters of the time we were playing Michigan football and solid and, and assignment sound and, um, and, and you know maybe more, but you know there's some of the times things were uncharacteristic. You know we're we're getting we're getting penalties, um, you know giving up cheap yardage on defense or um, you know the false starts and, and miscues that we had on on offense. And um, it'll keep us humble. Uh, we'll move on with this one with humble hearts uh, going into the big game against Penn State. Uh, and I also got to talk about the defense. I mean, it was pitched a shutout in the second half, and we were at halftime. We were, you know, hey, we got to have the best half of football. 
of the season. Got to come right now and, uh, and get locked in. And uh, I thought our defense did a tremendous job of that, um, totaling seven sacks, all by a different guy. Um, I think I'm right on that. Ten tackles for loss. I mean, there was uh, the pressure really came, and the and the the tight coverage, you know, came along with it. And guys just understand they're good enough too. They don't have to grab. They don't have to, uh, um, you know, interfere to uh, to get the coverage. And it um, thought we made some great adjustments. Coach Clink was coaching it hard, and uh, you know, there was a lot of a lot of coaching going on, but. Uh, really felt like that coverage tightened and the, and the pass rush you know, started getting home. Um, so uh, all in all, yeah, we'll move on to uh, happy for the win. And you know, when the wheels touch down in, in Michigan, we'll get on to the big game against Penn State. But may never have it. Won't have a bigger win this week. You know, and 6-0. Uh, and oh, uh, Sets us up for the a big showdown against Penn State. John, I was going to ask about the defense and when you have a quarterback dropping back that many times to throw, is it important that you guys have the sort of depth that you were talking about to be able to not just rely on one or two, but having them come in kind of in waves? Yeah, um, with the, with the edge guys, um, you know, six really. I mean, uh, you know. Upshaw and Yabi and Mike Morris, uh, Jalen Harrell, um, Derek Moore, Braden McGregor. It's a, it's a, it's a group, you know. Um, and uh, you know, I think they're all, they're all really playing well, playing well against the run, getting off blocks, and also putting the pressure on the quarterbacks. Uh, I thought the inside guys, Chris Jenkins, uh, Mason Graham, and Mozzie Smith. All played, uh, all played really well uh, in defending the run game. And uh, you know, last but not least, let's not leave out AJ Henning. I mean, there's some big punt returns in this game. I think he had over 100 yards in punt return yardage. That's some people call that hidden yardage, but it was, uh, it was, it wasn't hidden in my opinion today. That was a, it was a big factor in the game. Uh, he did a great job, and even had one, one, one called back. Um, might have been a 20, 25 yard return. Um, we we had a block in the back call, which I did not I did not see that uh, where anybody blocked anybody in the back. Especially, uh, I think um, Q got called for that one. I thought that was was not a great call. Um, but it was it was it was being called tight, and you know we gotta we gotta be we gotta be. You know, things to improve, things to things to be better at. But like I said, probably keep us humble uh, in a good way moving into next week. Isaiah? Jim, speaking of calls, did you get an explanation on the Jalen Harrell? Like? Yeah, I mean, I, I could tell what, uh, what the referee saw, you know, I mean, but, I mean, it was, it was one of those, it was wipe the brow, which, um, uh, I guess you can't do anything. I mean, that was the message that I got back. I mean, you can't do anything of any nature. I and mean, I pointed out a few other ways that players signal first down. And, uh, you know, there's there's things, you know. I mean, I, I think he's kind of equating it to some kind of throat slash, uh, but it certainly wasn't. And uh, as I said, that was called, that was called really tight on that one. But, um, and, yeah, yeah. I mean, just continue to keep coaching it. I mean, it, um, we're, we we coach that one big time. I mean, no celebrations. You don't want to bring any. Can't bring any attention on yourself. Uh, is is what the rule I get, was the explanation I got. So, um, which seems inconsistent because you see a lot of a lot of uh, at times attention being brought to somebody's you know self you know through the rest of the game. Um, but not for, uh, we just got to, all we can do is, uh, you know, try to do that, do it better and not give it any, any kind of, uh, any kind of, make it any kind of close.
to where you could, uh, you know, leave that as, as that type of a judgment call is our message. No, um, no, I haven't. Chris? Coach, can you talk about how Carson Barnhart did filling in and what a luxury it is to have him out there when something like that happens? Yeah, it was great. Um, I thought he did a great job. Great to have Carson back um, and healthy. And uh, you know, Trente probably has one of those dreaded high ankle sprains. But um, same thing that Carson had, and now Carson's healed and back, and and uh, you know he'll he'll need to uh, you know step up. And we have a ton of confidence in Carson. I mean, can, have considered him a starter, you know, since uh, the beginning of training camp. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, um, he's just been getting better and better. Um, and I thought his coverage was, was good on the, he got tested in the, in the passing game as well, but I mean, he's, which is really good because his, his forte is the run stopping physical type downhill linebacker. And, uh, as Scott Kehoe says, just keep, just keep hammering people. Good things will happen. So um, that was that was uh, he's been raised right. So uh, it's, it's good. That was a uh, that was a uh, part of a th three way text between me, Jimmy, and Scott this past week. So he took it to heart. Last question here with Austin. You mentioned some of the team at halftime have been needed to play their best half of football of, of the season. Can you maybe elaborate on what your message was to them? And yeah, we're going to play our best half of football of the season. <laughs> uh, and, uh, yeah, just, all we're asking is everything you got. Um, it, it's going to be needed. Um, I thought I responded well. I mean, best stat, best stat probably going is 21 to, 21 to nothing in the second half. All right. <clears throat> Thank you. All right.